Hi gamers, it's Simply Fun Gaming here and we're taking another look at Shadows of Forbidden Gods, this time with a tutorial video and we're going to be covering the Supplicant Agent, which is the first agent you start with for two of the three currently released gods, those two gods being Iasta and She Who Will Feast. Dinerva plays a little bit differently, she doesn't start with an ad uh, a Supplicant Agent, she actually can create any agent apart from the Supplicant on the startup. So for the for Iasta and for She Who Will Feast, the Supplicant is your starting agent, it's the first one that you begin with, and I think it's crucial to get an idea of what their skills might be, how they play, and how they might fit into your game plan depending on the god that you're playing as. So the first thing to mention about the Supplicant is their stats, and as you can see here they've got these various stats on the left, we've got Might 2, Law 2, Intrigue 4 and Command 3. So they're fairly all-round kind of characters, they're not the best fighters. They can have a couple of minions with a good command stat there. They are quite good at infiltrating supplicants, which is good to start with because as we know early game you tend to be doing a lot of infiltration and a lot of trying to get into the nations of men and trying to work your mischievous ways. So they can be used pretty effectively for that. Now for, if we just skip a turn, for Yasta's Supplicant, we actually get three unique starting traits and we can pick one of these three. So the first one is Protector of the Tome, while holding the Laughing King's Tome, which he starts with, the Supplicant for Yasta, his Might and Defense are increased by two. That's good if you want to go into a more fighty type of Supplicant. It's also quite good for the very, very end game with Yasta as well, for reasons that I won't spoil in this video, but it can be useful to have a Supplicant with quite strong fighting statistics while holding the book. The second trait that we could choose with Yasta's Supplicant is Maddening Tongues, and this is a one that I quite like to pick, but it is risky. So while in a human settlement you increase the madness of the settlement by 1.3 per turn, the Supplicant also gains 0.2 Menace per turn, so over 5 turns he'll gain 1 Menace and he will increase the Madness um, by you know 1.3 times 5, whatever that is. So this is also quite a useful uh, ability to give your Supplicant, it can, as you can see, you can imagine it spreads Madness just by being in the settlement. So what I like to do is actually infiltrate settlements, they're going mad, they're going mad while you're doing this, then lay low, and even while you're completing the lay low challenge, reducing your profile of menace, you're still doing some damage to the settlement because you're increasing that madness and increasing the, uh, obviously the unrest and potentially making the ruler mad as well. The final starting trade for Yasta Supplicant is Favourite Toy, this is also one that I really love. Um, <laughs> it's very thematic, so once per game, effectively, if the Supplicant dies, they are resurrected at the Elder Tomb with minimum profile of Menace. <laughs> exactly what it says on the tin there. The beautiful thing about favourite toy is, you can, effectively, it gives you free reign to do whatever you like. You can be a bit risky, you can be a bit ballsy with the Supplicant, and if they die, oh well, it doesn't matter, it's not the end of the world, they'll come back anyway. I can't remember if they lose their items, they certainly lose their minions, but I can't remember about their items and their gold. I think they actually keep them. I could be wrong. Uh, but it is very, very uh, powerful. You can imagine just getting an agent back when they've immediately died at no cost. Great ability. So we'll pick favourite toy just to, uh, just to select that one there. The starting traits for the Supplicant for She Who Will Feast, and notice that the portrait looks a little bit different there, more clouded in shadow, probably a bit more evil looking I would suggest. The same stats, Might 2, Law 2, Intrigue 4, Command 3. But the portrait is different to represent a slightly different playstyle. Now the current starting trait for the Supplicant with She Who Will Feast is simply to increase Command, Might, Intrigue or Law by 1, as you can see here. Intrigue is a great choice, normally one I go for. If you've got Intrigue 5, you are, you know, you're taking off 5 of the, uh, the challenge requirements. Every time you're doing a challenge, it uses Intrigue, and you're doing a lot of challenges using Intrigue to start with. But the idea here is effectively you've got complete flexibility over the supplicants. You can specialise them in any particular way that you want. Sometimes I'll pick Might or Law as well, very rarely, but depending on the 
on the playstyle I'm going for. Now, these are the current. Let's let one there. These are the current abilities for the uh, for the supplicant for she who will feast. Starting traits, rather. Forgive me. I have spoken to the developer, and I believe that there are going to be some unique starting traits introduced for this supplicant, but they're not there yet. They're probably a couple of weeks out. So. Hopefully in a few weeks there'll be some more unique traits for the supplicant for she who will feast. But those are them for now. So what is the supplicant good for? Well, I said earlier, I mentioned it briefly earlier, but the supplicant is your starting agent. So really you want to start using them to initiate your early game plan. And generally a good thing to be doing early game is to be infiltrating human societies. Not always the way, but quite often that's the case. So. If we look on this map here, I would probably initially do one of two things with this supplicant. I would either go down here and start and infiltrate this coven and start spreading shadow in this area. Or I would head to a village or a city or what have you and start infiltrate well, a village most likely I would start in. But I would head to a civilised location and start trying to infiltrate. And then I would try to eventually infiltrate a city, potentially a capital and potentially look to enshadow it later. Shadow is such a key part of the game at present. I don't think it's always going to be so vital as it is now, but currently it is a very important part of the game. You can't really play the game without using it in some way. So you want to start moving into that game plan with your early agents and particularly with your supplicants. So let's move them over here and we'll start doing some infiltration of the coven really quick. Yes, we know about the primal font, we'll ignore that for now. We'll ignore that the uh, mediator is fully aware. We're gonna quickly oh something I we're gonna quickly actually just drop the toe because we're playing as he has to, we should drop his nasty book, the laughing king's toe, here. So we'll place that a second, it takes one turn, go away. Done that, there we are. Then we'll head back to the coven and start infiltrating it. it. Takes 13 turns, not as quick as if we were using a supplicant from She Who Will Feast, of course, and we'd increase that intrigue stat, which is interesting, particularly when it relates to Shadow. So, oh, the other thing I wanted to mention about the supplicant, and this is true for any supplicant, is that they, they. Currently, there isn't a supplicant in the game that doesn't start here, but the supplicants currently in the game all have their home location as the other two. That's where they start. Okay. Start at this tomb location, which is, as we know, the, the seat of power, if you like, for your awakening evil god. In this case, Yasta. It's up here. They also, they don't have a family, so the supplicants can't start again. Currently, I don't know if this will change for any of the other gods, maybe. Mammon, who's looking to be introduced as like a god of greed and avarice and this, you know, seeking out great wealth, perhaps their supplicant might have an option to be a member of a family, like the trickster or the courtier, for example. But the supplicant currently doesn't have a family. Well, they do. They're, they're the only member of their family. So this <laughs> supplicant is 89 years old. He looks well. He's a member of House of the Lords, and he belongs to the society known as the Dark, which is obviously our society. House of the Lords is not cursed, so well, apart from the fact that their only member is a pawn for a dark god, I guess. But if we look on the Heroes tab, we can see there are no heroes from House of the Lords. It doesn't exist. Apart from our, just for our supplicants. It's also worth mentioning that you can see at the, on the Supplicants information panel here, obviously the challenge they're doing as normal, the family, the other team, but you can also see what you decided as their starting trait and indeed any future traits you pick. So here it says favourite toy. Obviously we know what that does, it brings them back if, if they die. But it'll actually tell you if this is used, it will say on the screen used in brackets if you've used that, so that's a good thing to obviously be aware of. I think you'd know anyway if your supplicant had died, but just in case you'd forgotten there, it is referenced on here. So apart from infiltrating, spreading shallow, shadow, generally being a pest and kind of being this all-round type um, agent, you know, they can 
and potentially we could have infiltrated the orcs and started doing some good work with those or causing sort of drama there. Another good thing that we can use the supplicant for, or that I think is a good use of the supplicant, is to actually go into ruins and try and find items because they're all round. Any item pretty much suits their playstyle to a degree. And if you find an item that is, you know, I don't know, the blade of killing heroes that's some really great might item, for example, well, you can always go and give that to your warlord or your baroness or a more fighty type agent if you choose. Or, of course, you can hold on to it and make sure your supplicant is quite, is quite strong. Like with any agent, the supplicant is to a point expendable, but they are unique. And because of the first agent you start with, I have a bit of a soft spot for them. There's no reason for this, I shouldn't. <laughs> they are, they should be completely expendable, but especially with favourites. Or I quite like trying to keep my supplicants as long as I possibly can, and ideally keep them alive to the end, just a bit of a challenge I set myself. If they die, it's not the end of the world. You haven't lost the game, as long as they've achieved something that suits your goals and what you're trying to achieve through the game. But yeah, that's, they can specialise into many different roles. They can become fairly fighty, as you can imagine. They're kind of jack of all trades, master of none. They'll never be as fighty as a warlord or a baroness if they're equal level. They'll never be as great at infiltrating as a courtier um, or even a hierophant to be honest, but they can play into any. And as they, because they're your starting one as well, they tend to get levels. So as they're getting levels, you can increase the stats. When more traits are added, of course, you'll be able to give them different traits and there might be you know, a specialist tree depending on the god or what have you once the developer gets around to adding that. But you can give them more stats and they do tend to become quite powerful assets. Um, under your control. So that's the supplicants. If you've got any questions guys please do throw them down in the, in the comment section below. If you like what you see please do leave a, you know hit the like button. If you'd like to see more of this sort of, sort of content please do subscribe to the channel. As I said in my previous video I will be doing a playthrough next of the Aster, the Laughing King which is this happy chappy over here. Um, I'll be looking to cover some other games as well at some point, but I just love this game so much and it's updated so quickly. I've just it's really got the bug for this game, guys, so I will be doing another Let's Play of this and going through some uh, a play with a different god and you can see how they compare. So he also has very different s skill sets to the uh, She Who Will Feast, and particularly the end game is, in, is quite different. Um, compared to She Who Will Feast, but you can look forward to that in future videos. Like I said, like, subscribe if you want to. Otherwise, thank you very much for watching, and hopefully, I'll see you again soon.